Hello. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> All right. Let's just wait for a couple more people to join. My mom is sending us hearts. <laughs> Yeah, this is interesting. I've never done this uh, Instagram live thing before. I've chimed in on a few other, um, you know, like live feeds. But, All right. you know, f fingers crossed, you know me. I'm like <laughs> not very, yeah, savvy when it comes to tech in general or, you know. Well, this is only my number two, so I'm. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, look at, look at, what's up, Bill? How you doing? All right, well, I think we can get started. It looks like we have a couple of people tuned in. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. This is our second SAR Artist Live conversation where we get a behind the scenes look at our previous uh, present and future artists fellows, um, see what they're working on and what's inspiring them today. Um, so I'm here with uh, Ian Kuali'i, he was the 2019 uh, Ronald and Susan Dubin Fellow at SAR. Um, and today we're just going to be taking about 30 minutes to um, see what he's been up to. So Ian, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself <laughs> briefly to the audience. <laughs> All right. uh, thank you, Felicia. Um, aloha kako, uh, greetings everyone. My name is Ian Joseph Keikoa Hardwick Kuali'i, or just Ian Kuali'i. Um, and we're transmitting live from the ashy ashram, the dusty dungeon, <laughs> the crusty crypt. Um, my my new at home uh, like studio space was, which is essentially just the garage uh, being converted. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I mean, first off, okay, let's. <laughs> I, I, it's hard for me to talk about myself during. Uh, you know, with everything that's going on currently uh, around the globe, um, regardless of where you stand politically, um, you know, I wish you safety, wellness, and love. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get right into this. Um, I was uh, born in Southern California in downtown Fullerton uh, in a house on the other side of the tracks, not on the proper city side of uh, the tracks. And uh, I was raised like back and forth between Orange County, California, um, and uh, primarily the island of Maui in uh, Hawaii. Um, I am of both uh, Mescalero Apache and Native Hawaiian ancestry, or Kanaka. And uh, I also have some European blood, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, I... Um, came up basically in the hip hop movement of uh, the 80s and um, and my cultures, uh, primarily the Hawaiian culture, um, doing what us Hawaiians do and, you know, doing what us hip hop heads do, um, b-boying or break dancing, um, doing graffiti, <laughs> both sanctioned and unsanctioned, um, tried rapping, was terrible at it, so I gave up. Um, and let my friends that were great rappers uh, continue with that. And uh, tried DJing, was terrible at, at that as well. I have a pretty nice scratch, but um, yeah, other than that, I'm, I was terrible at DJing. So um, I gave up on that. Um, and yeah, like somewhere down the line, um, I just, you know, I was uh, partaking in, uh, you know, illegal activities and uh, kept on getting in trouble with the law. And, uh, you know, my mother, um, Carolyn Kuali'i, who's, you know, uh, completely sacred to me, you know, um, I was tired of breaking her heart. So I figured at some point I would transform, um, like my practice and all of the, the knowledge and wisdom that I had, I had gained from cultural hip hop and, and my Hawaiian culture and, uh, and figure out a way to s sort of marry the two. And, um, and here we are, you know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Um, for those of you who follow us on uh, Facebook, today we shared an article about Ian that was published on the National Museum of the American Indian blog. So if you're curious about Ian's background and his trajectory, you can uh, visit our Facebook or just Google um, NMAI and uh, read some more about that. Um, so 
what was I going to say? Oh, so in our last conversation, um, I don't know if anyone who tuned in with uh, me and Leah Matafrawa, we waited until the end for questions, but uh, this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. So um, please feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, I'll be sharing those with Ian. So um, if you're wondering anything about his practice or his materials or anything like that, feel free to type that in the comment section and I'll be sure to ask Ian. Great. Um, so would you mind giving us a little tour of your studio space? Um, of the of the dusty dungeon? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of recycling because of moving into uh, this new uh, condo in Ogopoge, um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. So yeah, I mean, I basically just have behind me some racks of inventory. Um, I have to uh, see that big old pile of cardboard there. <laughs> that has to be, uh, you know, chopped down and recycled. Um, and that will that whole wall there behind it will become just a full on uh, cutting wall for my cut paper practice. Um, and then I have another cutting wall here, a couple like little images of like earthworks and passwords and, and stuff. some of these you created at SAR, right? Oh yeah, uh, well, yes, two, two of the three there, I created at SAR. One was another uh, piece called Tethered, which was a collaboration with Chinupahanska Luger um, that I believe we did in 2018 um, with the uh, Santa Fe Land Vienna, I believe it was. Um, that was. That was an incredible experience. Um, but yeah, uh, and then yeah, I mean, it's a tiny space. I basically, here below me, there's, um, you know, like my tabletop cutting mats and whatnot, television, so I can distract myself. Um, yeah, so tiny, but, you know, serves its purpose. Maybe one of these days I'll have myself an extravagant Kent Monkman <laughs> size studio. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the space for now. It's great. I love that you have all of your um, work hanging up. It's um, a really nice backdrop for this video. Um, and, and a black flag, that black American flag right there was a piece that was supposed to be um, part of an exhibition um, with this uh, completely radical organization called In Decline. Um, where they they basically I, I unfortunately I was going through like a bunch of personal stuff so the it, the piece didn't actually get to make it into the exhibition but that mm -hmm. black flag is completely covered in like oil um, mm -hmm. and so yeah it was for they 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 took they rented a room at the Trump Hotel I believe in Chicago and they did a complete like anti-Trump art installation on this mm -hmm. inside of, of the room so that black American flag was supposed to be part of that anyway and then yeah i have some other inventory down there um like some other pieces that are all hand cut paper yeah would it be possible uh, to see a close-up of the portrait down below and maybe um, uh yeah, yeah about me, that? Let me i'm not very tech savvy so um let me i'm still very much a paper blade pencil kind of individual um yeah so this is a portrait of Uncle Billy Freitas that I did. I actually created this piece uh, during um, the fellowship, uh, Dubin Fellowship at SAR. Um, and then I have like a few other pieces here that are in inventory. This piece right here is actually a small one that I completed yesterday, which will be, um, <clears throat> let me just bring it over here. Um, this, is, this will be donated to, um, can everybody see it okay? Um, yeah. Um, okay. So just sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. It's for a, um, a fundraiser um, for black and uh, black trans lives. Um, so I cut this piece yesterday um, freehand uh, and it's for a fundraiser that um, uh, I, I student organization is, um, is uh, spearheading. So yeah, very very happy. It's like one of the things I actually enjoy doing most is creating works works for um, for vetted organizations, you know, or like individuals that I know 
are trustworthy and, and, and aren't just creating works for, or creating uh, fundraisers to line their own pockets, you know? Right. So, like another thing that I did was, um, I've, <laughs> I've been driving myself crazy uh, working on like 60 small pieces that are like this, that they're, they're all done. Uh, I mean, they're all sold, but um, they're all pretty much similar, but they're different. Um, but these were something that I created at the beginning of 2020 or an idea that I created at the tw beginning of 2020 um, where I would do 60 pieces for like $30 a piece and then half of the proceeds would go to uh, like, again, some vetted organizations mm -hmm. here that would help, uh, you know, like give uh, families in need during the pandemic, like food or mm -hmm. assistance. So um, yeah, that's like where my head's at. Um, we have a question from the audience. Uh -oh. um, where are we at? Says, Can you talk a little bit about how you work? Is your process the same for each piece? Um, no. So uh, like these smaller ones here, you know, they're all completely freehand uh, cut. And, you know, like, like pieces like this, or even the piece in the background, this one here, um, right. those are all like freehand cut paper pieces. So I just go in with a, a standard number, like 11, exacto blade you know nothing fancy mm -hmm. um and just essentially sketch with the blade um and uh when i do when i do pieces that are more like the portraiture um mm -hmm. like obviously um i mean i don't always have to um sketch i've been doing this like long enough that i i know my my lines basically you know and um but i typically go off of a photo reference for portraiture um, and then in some cases I'll lay up like the yellow canary tracing paper that's up top on the rack. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll, I'll sketch out the design as necessary and then just cut extract and then, you know, build from there. Uh, and you don't use a projector or anything like no, that? No, mm -hmm. Wow. Um, do you have anything that you're working on right now at your cutting station that you could show us? I mean, I know um, you're on those small works, but. Yeah, it's basically just trying to complete all these uh, small works because that was something I, I did, you know, like, I think it was like around March. So I need to get all, all 60 of those pieces done <laughs> and mailed out to people around the globe. Um, but I can show, let's make Would it- Would you be show. willing to show us uh, what the process is like a little bit? Maybe do a little bit of cutting? If that's too difficult, definitely. that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think not. people would love to see it. Definitely not difficult. Let me just see if I can- uh, Get my camera around. Bear with me, good people. <laughs> Let's see. Um, maybe if I just turn it on. Oh, this thing doesn't like me. I barely like me, so. <laughs> just like we me. all like you. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is going to be an awkward sort of angle, but uh, let's see. Okay, I think that's fine. It's sideways, right but I think that's fine. It looks yeah, great. Yeah. You can see the whole piece of paper in the frame. Yeah, so basically I'll just go in and like, um, so since I'm, I'm doing ones that are all pretty pretty similar, I mean, they're all unique from each other, I'll like lay one next to me to, you know, kind of get, get the basic flow idea, right? I just go in and just cut, you know, and remove. Um, and, and where do you get the ideas for your patterns? Are they just things you see in your everyday life? Um, they're a combination of things like uh, inspiration from pat patterns in nature, mm -hmm. um, things that, are, that we consider NOAA or like just kind of common pattern work in Hawaiian tradition. And then mm -hmm. some things are actually, um, I can't speak about, you know, right. but um, <laughs> But yeah, they, you know, they all have different meanings. So like, uh, let's take for instance, like, you know, most traditions or indigenous traditions, they, you see like a triangle pattern like this, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I can't think of maybe like, a, I can't think of an indigenous uh, um, group around the globe that doesn't have this pattern. <laughs> I believe your people, I mean, use it like quite often as well, right? You, like Shumash use it? Oh yeah, that's definitely a Shumash pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? No, it's definitely a Hawaiian pattern, but it's definitely also like a West African pattern. Um, and yeah, so 
uh, this symbolizes a lot of different things in, in Hawaiian tradition, right? So it symbolizes, it could symbolize a mountain, it could symbolize like teeth, you know, mm -hmm. it could symbolize different, um, different symbols of war. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, and then this, this pattern here, which is in the center, mm -hmm. is just like my own sort of, you know, weird pattern that I used to say um, was like sort of whispering the idea of like navigation and star navigation mm -hmm. from like our Polynesian or uh, oceanic traditions. But you know, like, I, I, you know, I don't want to claim any, any stuff like that really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's go back into this. Great. So for those of you who are just joining us, please feel free to ask questions in the comment section. Uh, we'll be answering those as we go. Or not. It's okay. We can just <laughs> enjoy each other's company. Very therapeutic to watch this. <laughs> so what is inspiring you these days? Um, I mean, I know I already asked about your patterns, but is there anything else that's um, inspiring you to create work recently? Um, it's, it's been, been interesting, uh, because of, you know, what's happening currently, um, it's, it's been a, a bit difficult for me to, to, you know, like I said before, like talk about myself, let alone create, you know, um, and if I do create, I want to create something that's, that's meaningful or something that again can be donated to, um, you know, organizations and, um, you know, help, help where I can with my, my abilities, you know, and, and, and the gifts that I was given. Um, so yeah, I mean, people's movements always, uh, always inspire me. Um, I just, you know, I'm always very cautious though of how and when I speak about them because I don't want to center myself or, um, take up too much space, you know, in general. Um, and, you know, I also, I also know that, you know, there's a lot of people that capitalize off of people's movements. And I definitely want to make sure that I'm never viewed as one of those individuals that my intentions are, are right, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but as far as like, you know, it's, it's still the same thing. My culture inspires me deeply. My, all of the hard work that my mother does um, to uplift communities, you know, of color everywhere, you know? Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Right. Yeah. Has your practice been affected at all by um, this pandemic that we're all dealing with and social distancing? Um, I think, you know, we, I think we're all like as creatives, we are all um, like feeling the effects of it in one way or another. Right. Right. Um, I know a lot of individuals, you know, they rely on um, going to galleries and museums to, you know, see exhibitions and, you know, help get those things like, um, their minds moving and their hearts moving, you know, and, and uh, to inspire them. And so I know that individuals are affected that way. Um, I'm, I mean, I think we're all feeling the effects um, financially, you know what I mean? Right. Like every, every individual I know, um, regardless of how, um, how far along they've, or successes they've had, had in their career, feel like everybody's getting hit, you know? Um, <laughs> But yeah, short of that, um, I'm pretty good. I've always been just like, I don't create work just to sell it. Right. You know, so um, I don't rely. I mean, that's the reason why I do like earthworks and things, things like, like that. I don't fully rely on um, or, you know, create work for, for financial, financial gains, you know? Right. Uh, I, can always, I can always go flip a cheeseburger or something, you know, I don't know, like, <laughs> make somebody a por nice portobello mushroom burger if they're like a vegan. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any earthworks planned in the near future? I do. So um, I still have uh, the earthworks piece that I have to compose for um, the settlement project which was the, the project and that was supposed to take place in Plymouth, UK. I guess that's another, another thing that, you know, um, due to the pandemic, uh, us individuals that were supposed to go for the, the, the Mayflower 400 or whatever it was called um, for uh, the project that Chinooboo Hanska Luger and his partner Ginger 
organized, you know, um, there were supposed to be like 27 of us, I believe, like uh, contemporary indigenous artists that were supposed to go out there to occupy Plymouth, UK and, mm -hmm. um, and do a series of uh, like occupations and interventions. And, uh, you know, my, my, my contribution to the, the project was to be like a large scale earthworks piece like land prayer um, mm -hmm. ro rooted in in like our Hawaiian practice of ho'oponopono you know which is uh, a practice of, of forgiveness you know mm -hmm. so um, but yeah I mean I have to um, things have obviously changed we we can't be there in person so um, I believe it's taking on um, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be talking about <laughs> this <laughs> currently but um, uh, it's supposed to be Take, it's planning on take. They believe they're planning on. It's taking a digital life. I don't know. Virtual is that whatever the kids are calling it these days? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I will. Oh, where did I go? I mean, we we're not getting a nice view of this other piece you have here. Oh man, yeah. I think my um, my little device uh, the battery died, so I'm gonna have to hold it. I think. I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, well, kiddos. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to just take... Oh, no, your audio cut out. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, hear okay. Me, perfect. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, you, so this project, the settlement project that um, was supposed to take place in Plymouth, UK, is possibly going to be remote or virtual now. So does that mean you're thinking about doing Earthworks remotely? Yes, so the the way that it'll it'll be um, the way that it, I mean I have a basic idea in my head. It's just um, I don't know if like with the pandemic again, mm -hmm. um, if I will be able to get out to like a proper area here in New Mexico. Um, and make it happen with, mm -hmm. you know, in, within the timeline, you know, I, I believe, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly when it's, when it's going down, it will go down. I mean, right. I mean you know, it, it will be and, because pra okay. prayer, prayer okay. and artist ceremony is, you know, highly important. So where could uh, folks go to stay up to date on that project? Um, I believe it's uh, just settlement UK dot org okay great I mean, don't, yeah. don't hold me to it i mean again <laughs> like it's you know i'm one of those individuals it's like i barely like like again i'm surprised that i was able to log in and mm -hmm. do the live thing you know so um but yeah that that should be um it always feels great doing the earthworks pieces you know um mm -hmm. i could i could i could sit in the studio all day and drive myself crazy with you know tedious cutting or fiber you know mm -hmm. work or um even like mixed media painting and stuff but there's just there's something um there's something that feels infinitely better about going outdoors and you know doing these ephemeral pieces you know right with, that nobody can own you know nobody can own you know okay we have another audience question <laughs> i got the best coconut fiber mustache ever so what's you up? do all right, so we have a great question. What are your thoughts on virtual art versus in-person art? Oof, uh, virtual art in, is an in, in-person art. Um, virtual, I feel, is super impersonal. <laughs> in-personal art, in-person is, is personal. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's individuals that do it well. Um, you know, like the 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 whole Afrofuturist movement. There's a lot of great individuals that are creating virtual art, um, and have been for like a while. Um, and even within the Indigenous Futurist uh, movement, you know, there's there's folks that are incredible with like you know projection mapping and you know um, doing things that um, translate well. You know not not in person but it you know completely stunning and 
and and t- you know they they take you when when you do get to experience them in person but you know translate extremely well I, and that's the other thing too is like i feel like even my like you have to kind of experience my hand cut paperwork in person in 40 in order for you to like actually grasp like you know what it is like I, like i'll say hand cut paper you know piece with like a painted virtual or something and people are like what do you mean by that and i have to sort of like walk them through it you know um yeah, I think I remember when you were a fellow, there were like a lot of questions about um, whether your hand cut paper pieces were um, like drawn onto black paper or if they were like stenciled onto something like people. It's like really hard to grasp the concept of uh, what it is. that It's like a negative space image, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, Sarah, Sarah, do what's up? Aloha, Sarah, uh, Sierra. How you doing from Hawaii? Kind of, kind of grew up with Sierra on Maui, um, and uh, I believe Sierra, Sierra's in like living on Oahu now. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of Hawaiians actually kind of actually on here right now. What's That's going awesome. on? Anyway, yeah, sorry. Oh, Pua, <laughs> Auntie Pua Case is on here. I'm sorry, I'm just like scrolling through. I'm like some beautiful human beings on here. Yeah, thank you everyone so much for taking the time to um, to be here with us today. Um, all right. Again, keep asking questions. If um, anyone in the audience has a question for Ian, feel free. Right. To- I apologize. I would be cutting more for your viewing pleasure, but again, I'm not a very tech savvy individual. My brother Mike Bam in the house. What's up? Haley's here too. I know. I see Haley right now. Are you really? <laughs> are you really putting us on blast like that, Haley? <laughs> um. So do you have any other, I mean, other than the Plymouth Project, do you have any other exhibitions or galleries? Yes, actually, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to catch you off, but um, the larger than memory uh, in contemporary indigenous uh, artists of the 20th century, I believe it's, or 20, I, don't, I forget exactly what the title is, but mm-hmm. larger than memory um, at the Heard Museum, which mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm super like honored to be in, you know, part of. Um, first off, I'm like the only like native Hawaiian, the only Kanaka in, in, in the exhibition, which is like a huge responsibility. And like, I had, you know, like, um, but it's, you know, like there's the likes of, you know, another Dubin fellow, like Jeffrey Gibson's in the exhibition, um, which is incredible. Uh, you know, Nani Chacon, um, who else is in it? Uh, Brian Youngin, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Kent Monkman, uh, like new, new individual, like younger individuals that are coming up right now that, that I'm like, are completely brilliant, like Eric Paul Reich, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the lineup is incredible. You know, yeah. so uh, that's, that's at the Heard Museum. Uh, my smaller works for the exhibition um, are already there. And uh, I was supposed to, before the pandemic happened, I was supposed to um, head out to Phoenix to do these like massive uh, hand cut paper, like site specific installation pieces, you know, that were, mm-hmm. um, I believe like 22 feet in height by 12 feet wide, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and they're part of my like, um, funny enough, they're part of my like um, monument pillar, um, like idea that I've been like working on for like the past few years. And they were, mm-hmm. so they were the first pieces that, uh, you know, I actually created with that whole concept. And then, and now, you know, what's happening, you know, currently. So it's, it's pretty wild. Um, so what are these uh, two pieces of the monument and pillar? What do they depict? Um, so one is of um, King Kamehameha the third, who, uh, y- you know, was a, a monarch for, the kingdom of Hawaii also was the first person to, well, was the person that um, wrote the constitution for, you know, um, our kingdom. And then on the flip side of it is an inverted Captain James Cook. Um, and so they're, they're actually in the massive, they were supposed to, they, they will be in the massive archways at the Heard Museum mm-hmm. as you're entering into the gallery. Okay. Um, and then apparently, like one of the Brian Young in, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be talking about this, but the, <laughs> what, what, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, one of the um, uh, Brian Young in whale skeletal mm-hmm. pieces will be in between the center. So you're going to be walking into the, the, into the gallery, 
seeing um, King Kamehameha the Third and uh, Captain James Cook inverted, and then the whale, which is hugely like it was. I don't even think like Aaron Joyce, the curator and the other curator, planned it out that way. But um, you know, Brian Young and skeletal piece is all white. My mm -hmm. paper is all white. Um, King Kamehameha the Third is from Lahaina, Maui. Um, and there's a huge whaling and like scrimshaw, you know, like heritage from that area. You know, it was like a huge, like it was a whaling village. And so, yeah, it's, it's like a beautiful sort of synchronicity, synchronicity right. you know. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Um, so, speaking of portraits, we Dang, have. Those whales are sick. Of course, Haley, you're going to be like so <laughs> sick. Um... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. I'm just making sure I'm getting everyone's questions. Um, we have one from Alicia. She wants you to maybe elaborate a little bit about your cutting process with the portraits. Oh, Alicia, you already missed out on that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like if, uh, if you didn't catch it before, it's um, sometimes I can actually just go in. I'll use like a photo reference. Um, I can just go in and actually cut. And then there are other times, depending on how complex they are, where um, I'll use the yellow uh, canary paper here mm -hmm. and lay it over my sheets of paper and then sketch out according um, to, um, or sometimes I'll just flip the paper around um, and then sketch out on the backside mm -hmm. and then just cut from the backside out. So yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, you were late, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's good that you're here. Um, all right, so any last questions from the audience? Um, if someone wanted to maybe purchase some of your work or um, stay up to date with your shows and whatnot, what's the best place, what's the best way to do that? Probably here on Instagram. Um, I, my website is currently down. It's been down for a while. Um, and my boss basically has been telling me that I need to, you know, square up and get like a square space or something and <laughs> <laughs> some sort of like, you know, uh, you know, some sort of like internet presence in, in the form of a website. But um, yeah, if anybody wants to buy my, you know, I don't know, iancooley.com right now and try to charge me like five times more for it further down the line, capitalize. <laughs> Haley says, listen to your boss. I always listen to my boss. I know. Uh, uh, I listen to my boss and I listen to my mom. Those are, <laughs> those are the most important things. So yeah. So do you have works available on your Instagram or how do people go about acquiring your work? Um, just hit me up, you know, like I'm, you know, it's social media, not anti-social media. Um, so uh, I typically answer all of my direct messages. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too, too hard to find, you know, or too hard. You can talk to me anytime, basically. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in like smaller works or whatever, whatever I have, uh, you know, uh, in my inventory, um, hit me up, hit me up in Instagram, you know? Great. Yeah. Oh, we got one more question. Who Any paper cuts? Any paper cuts? No, actually. Um, but a whole lot of corrugated cardboard cuts from moving into this new space. <laughs> um, what's the most devastating oh. thing to happen to one of your fragile pieces? um oh is that joshua what's up man how you doing how's the, how's everything in the bay right now anyway fragile pieces <laughs> uh one of the, the most devastating things to happen to one of my fragile pieces i don't think it's uh it wasn't so much devastating because you know i don't i don't i don't take the work isn't too precious you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so i don't know like one of the most irritating things that happened to one of my, my pieces, uh, happened, and then you've heard this story multiple times, uh, happened to me while I was doing my artist residency at the D. Young Museum in San Francisco, actually, Joshua. Um, some lady was like dropping off her kid for this like, at the Kimball Gallery for this uh, youth program. And the lady saw that I was working on this massive piece for, for the window that looks out towards the um, musical concourse. And she looked right at me while I was like staring my piece from across the room. And she walked right up to my piece and she grabbed my piece and pulled it off the wall so she could see like, like it was like some sort of, right. yeah. And then I was like, I just looked at her, like stared it down. I'm like, seriously, you come in 
drop your kid off at this museum. You know the kid's not supposed to be like seeing you touch the art, not supposed to touch the art. And she just comes right in and she like handles my stuff. But I mean, short of that, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really have too many, too many accidents uh, when it comes to cutting. There's been a few pieces where I've, um, I've over maybe overestimated like um, a line. And so it would sag a bit. Um, but then I started like playing, I started playing with, with that, um, like gravity always wins sort of concept, you know what I mean? Uh, so like for some of the larger pieces, I, I prefer that for them to droop and kind of like fold in on themselves. Right. Um, um, to kind of show that, you know, they're, they're like beyond fragile, you know, just like a human life or, you know, the energy we put into things. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, it's crazy, right, Josh? Like, it's, it's, like the, the lady would do that. It's insane. Yeah. Well, I think it's like a really beautiful practice what you do with your earthworks, you know, that they are meant to be um, ephemeral. And mm -hmm. you think yeah, you know, it's like we go into the idea and like conversation of, of like land acknowledgement, you know what I mean? And, and, and how do we, how do we, how, how do we approach the, the land that we have the honor and privilege to walk upon how do we like how do we honor it you know what i mean and right. um and you know i feel like you know i mean you're 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 all about land acknowledgments i mean that was your your thesis you know um at nyu but you know i wanted i i feel like a lot of times we it's never it's not not land acknowledgement it's it's more so like people acknowledgement you know what i mean we like we typically end up honoring like the original inhabitants of of like a region you know or of an area um and i know that like the people are the land and the, and the land are the people they're interchangeable right they're not they're like one and the same but um i feel like we don't we don't put enough on uh enough direction and, and enough intention and honesty towards towards the land when it comes to land acknowledgement it's always more so about like you know, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the this is this is Lenape land. You know, Lenape Hoking. You know, like mm -hmm. NYP. Um, you know, the it, it, or like wherever you are. You know what I mean? So, um, anyway, yeah. Uh, well, I think that's all we have for today. I just want to be really. I know it's so fun. <laughs> Um, I just want to be mindful of everyone's time and mindful of your time. Um, but before we go, I just wanted to share with everyone that we have um, another Dubin artist in the lineup for our next SAR Artist Live program. Um, Jeffrey Gibson is going to be joining us. Um, let me double check the date. So it's going to be on June 30th at noon mountain standard time so seriously don't miss that everyone <laughs> that's like that's that's important right there it's MacArthur, not, important. Not, not only it's like macarthur genius come on <laughs> well, you know? no it's important to like get together and support each other and converse so that's why i love this program and i think it's it's important um but yes, so please stay tuned on sar social media or instagram facebook um to get more information about our next um next sar artist live guests All hey right. love you too Haley. oh yeah and everyone black lives matter and black trans lives matter too yes all love right you. thank you ian of course all right goodbye bye